Hello everybody and welcome to another Scuffed Radio video. I'm still up here at the Cecil Ashburn Drive slash Montesano Lookout in the big white suburban here. And I'm gonna be doing a review video for an antenna that I have not seen a single review on YouTube for, which is crazy because this is such a good antenna that I just can't believe that no one else has reviewed it. And that antenna, of course, is the Hustler CG144. It is a two meter mono band collinear antenna. See, I have it mounted here. I've got a custom made free love mount puck mount with an NMO mount. And then from NMO, I go to the 3 8 by 24. Now, the reason I had to do that was because if I use a standard CB mount, like the one back here for the Predator antenna, uh, the SWR was horrible and I could never get it tuned out right. Once you're up on those VHF frequencies, you really can't use these big ball mounts. They just cause way too many problems and the diameter of that thing is so big that it just screws up everything with the mounting. So with a NMO to 3 8 uh, adapter here, this thing tunes up to down to a 1 to 1 perfect SWR. So let's go over the design of the antenna a little bit here. We have the 3 8 mount here which has uh, got a little set screw in it and you can move this up and down to tune it and do that when you're tuning it for the first time you slide it up and down. From there we have the first rod which goes up about 20 inches or so, probably about 24 inches there. And then from there we go to the phasing coil. Now this is a very very thin coil. It is kind of disappointing how small they made this coil because the power handling of this antenna is only 200 watts and that's 200 watts on sideband. You're only supposed to run 100 watts on FM and for how like well performing this antenna is on receive and transmit, I really really wish they would have built it with more power handling in mind but you know nobody ever runs that much power except for me so it would be kind of a, a waste I guess to make it be able to handle so much power. The receive on it is just so good at uh, I really wish it had the power handling for transmit. <laughs> so then moving on from the coil there we have the stinger at the top which uh, goes up another about four feet. The total height of this antenna is about seven feet and it does uh, hit things very occasionally. You're not really gonna hit much, but every now and then you come across a tree that's not been trimmed in a while or, or something like that that's lower than it should be and you do hit stuff. But I've hit a lot of stuff with this antenna and never broken anything. Oh look, there's somebody with a drone. <laughs> no, no one's ever broken my antenna, so I'm pretty happy with it as far as the quality of the construction goes. We have taken one of these apart and just saw the coil inside and saw how thin it was. Other than that, man, uh, I've been running the same antenna on this Suburban for since I got it and I could not be happier. So if we go around here to the back, I'm going to talk about how I have the mounting situation set up. So you saw the, uh, the outside of the mount there. Um, inside the truck, you, you can't tell if there's a mount. It's actually right there and there's a pocket there for the DVD player which actually hides the mount perfectly. There's no bubble or bump or anything from the underside of the mount. So running from there to, to, to over here, which is where the cable is, I have half inch Andrew Heliax. It's super, super low loss stuff, which is crucial in my opinion for the best performing mobile setup. A lot of people will run RG8, RG152 RG, uh, or, or whatever that stuff is called. And uh, that stuff I think just has too much loss on VHF and above to be uh, to use, be used in a mobile install. It's a lot more work to get half inch stuff in here, but I was able to do it without you being able to even tell there's anything in the truck. The half inch runs across here, down this A pillar here, whatever pillar that's called runs down, runs through this, this interior trim piece up over the wheel well and into the back of my radio. So it comes out of here. This is all N connector. That's another thing. This is an N to PL259 uh, jumper cable and it plugs straight to the back of the radio. So we have so little loss between the antenna and the radio. It's, it's really ideal. So there you go. There's the, uh, the setup for the Hustler CG144. Uh, let's talk about this antenna drive down the road. So here's a little video overlay of the uh, antenna when I'm driving at about 60 miles an hour. As you can see, it does bend in the wind quite a bit, but what I've noticed is that the performance of the antenna really doesn't degrade all that much. Um, your radiation pattern has definitely changed because the antenna's bent, but as far as, you know, overall range, uh, the antenna does not become completely useless at high speeds. Of course, whenever you come to a stop, you may notice that everything kind of smooths out because if you're in a really hilly area, a really mountainous area, you'll get a lot more fluctuation in your signal than you would with something like a, a lower gain dual bander like I have up here. This antenna has about 5.2 dB of gain. Uh, that's a dBi of gain, which is the most gain of any commercially available mobile antenna. The only one that comes even close is the Comet SBB7, which I believe has the same amount of gain. But that is a dual bander. This is a mono bander. 
And I think that the performance benefits of having a monobander with a lot more wire in it and less phasing coils and whatnot uh, can't be understated. Now I'm kind of noticing over here something going on. And I think I'm gonna go check it out. That looks cool actually. All right, so now that we got the details out of the way and I went and said hi to those guys over there, I thought, thought that was neat. They're doing some microwave stuff over there. We're gonna go ahead and do some uh, actual testing of the antenna out. We're parked way up here. We should be able to get signal really, really far. One other thing we're gonna be doing here is actually trying out the low gain versus the high gain. So we're gonna pick out a really far away distant repeater and then we're gonna switch to the low gain and see how the performance changes. So uh, let's go ahead and head up to the front where the controls are for the radio and get right to it. So the first thing I think I'm gonna do here is do a little bit of calling out on 5.2 Simplex here and see if we can't get anybody going up on the national calling frequency. Kilo mic four, Oscar Victor Zulu, KM4OVZ. Calling CQ CQ 52 Simplex. Anybody out there today? Yeah, Oscar Victor Zulu. Can you copy AG4YX? AG4YX. Yeah, I copy you. Uh, you must be pretty close to me. I'm up here at the uh, Cecil Ashburn Drive lookout. Uh, where are you at? I'm headed to that same spot there. I'm about uh, half a mile from there. But yeah, I'm in a big white Chevy Suburban if you see me parked up here. All right, I'm in a silver Toyota. I'll be up here in a minute. And uh, yeah, man, good to hear you. AG4YX. Yep, 10-4. All right, I'll be up here if you want to stop by and say hi. I'm going to keep calling out here. I'm trying to pick up a distant station here for the review of this antenna. Kilo Mike 4, Oscar Victor Zulu. I'm up here in Huntsville. Is there anybody south, maybe towards the Coleman area or towards Athens or something like that who could pick me up and give me a signal report? KN4, okay, okay, why? KN4 OKY, I got you about a half scale signal here. Uh, what's your 20 at? I am in Blount County, Alabama. I'm about 35 miles north of Birmingham and about 25 miles south of Gadsden. Oh yeah, you're a good distance away. Yeah, you're the perfect station I wanted to pick up. Uh, would you be able to stand by for a minute while I switch my antenna over to a uh, low gain antenna and uh, see if you can still hear me? I got about an S5 on you right there. I got about an S4 on you up here. Alright, I'm going to go switch antennas and I'll put another call out. Uh, if I don't hear anything back, I'll switch back to this one. So uh, keep an ear out. This is KM4OVZ. Alright, this is KM4OVZ. I'm on the low gain antenna now. How do you copy me if you copy me at all? I copy you there. You're scratchy. Not bad. I can understand everything you're saying, but no signal whatsoever. Well, you've dropped down to about an S1 on my end, an S1. So there's a definite significant improvement on the primary antenna there versus the secondary. Primary is a Hustler CG144, which is a two meter mono band antenna with about 5.2 dB of gain. And the secondary I'm on now is a little Comet dual bander with, I want to guess, maybe about two dB of gain. This is KM4OVZ. Let me switch back to the high gain. All right, this is Kilo Mike for Oscar Victor Zulu back on the high gain antenna. How do you copy me? Oh yeah, that sounds good right there. Good clean audio. Well, thank you so much for the signal report. This is gonna help a lot for my uh, YouTube video I'm making here. This is KM4OVZ. I'm gonna be uh, go back to doing the other parts of the video I got to make here, but you really helped out with my demonstration a lot. So thank you so much. This is Joseph KM4OVZ in the Big White Suburban up here on the Cecil Ashburn Drive Lookout, which is located in Huntsville on top of Montesano. It is the Cecil Ashburn Drive Lookout. Roger, Roger. Good luck to your video. KN4, okay, what? 73's to ya. KN4, OVZ clear. Well, as you could uh, hear and see there, there is a definite significant improvement over a regular Comet antenna. And before you say that it's uh, something to do with factor other than the antenna, um, that Comet is set up the same way as the Hustler. Same kind of low loss feed line, except right there at the end where I've got some coiled up, a little bit higher loss stuff that runs the connector. And the mounting solution is also metal sheet metal mounted into the roof. Not as much reinforcement as the 11 meter or the Hustler, but it is still a lot better than having a uh, magnet mount or something like that. As far as the location on the roof of the antenna, there's the low gain and here's the high gain. So the high gain is obviously gonna be centered more, but as far as having lots of ground plane in front of the antenna, the back one actually has a little more ground plane and it was still outperformed massively by the, the Hustler. So there you go, you really cannot beat 
that hustler as far as range goes. I mean, you heard that guy. <laughs> Almost a, uh, a definitely a double on the signal strength there um, versus uh, the low gain. Way more than a double, actually. Just, uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. Twice as much on the S meter, if that makes sense. So I hope this uh, video helped you out if you're thinking about getting one of these hustlers. Highly, highly recommend it. Just make sure that you have a good mounting setup. There is a uh, 1 8 thick aluminum sheet underneath here. That is a Breedlove Mounts custom puck mount. It's the same diameter on the underside of the roof. And uh, this thing is huge. I mean, you cannot, I mean, it's gonna, it would, it would break this before the roof would even bend slightly. So you're never gonna lose the antenna via mag mount or something uh, if you do it that way. So there you go. That's my review for the Hustler CG144. The best, highest gain, highest performing mobile antenna on the market. Thank you all for watching. This is Scuffed Radio, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye, 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 bye.